Hello, this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Uh, we all know about Thomas Cooks. He's the shooter at the rally um, that Donald Trump had in Butler, Pennsylvania on uh, July 13th. Now, what's crazy about all this is that just now, the Wall Street Journal is putting out some information that is uh, way more interesting. It's crazy information. So we know he leaves the house in the morning sometime. And then later, the father realized that the AR-15 was missing, but assumed that he went to the, the range to shoot. But um, I think there's information out there that the mother eventually called the range and he never showed up there. And then they got worried that he was doing something else with that weapon. I think they knew something about their son and that he was capable of doing something dangerous with that gun. And that's why they were worried about where he was. Normally, people at 20 years old, parents aren't looking around. Plus, they wouldn't have even checked to see if the AR-15 was missing, right? I mean, normal, normally, that wouldn't be something that you would do, except they knew about their kid. So they knew he was a certain way. But the new information that's coming out right now is, from the Wall Street Journal is that he actually flew a drone out there. Look at this right here. A gunman who tried to kill Donald Trump was able to fly a drone and get aerial footage of the Western Pennsylvania fairgrounds shortly before the former president was set to speak there. Uh, law enforcement officials briefed on the matter said further underscoring the stunning security lapses ahead of Trump's near assassination. Thomas Matthew Crooks flew the drone on a programmed flight path earlier in the day on July 13th to scour the Butler Farm showgrounds ahead of Trump's ill-fated rally, the officials said. The predetermined path, the officials added, suggests Crooks flew the drone more than once as he searched and scoped out the event site. Now, he wouldn't even necessarily have to be looking through the camera at the time on one of these paths. You could just have the drone fly and then later check the you know video out the that you recorded when you were flying the drone. So I actually have a Mavic uh, 2 Pro and I also have a Mavic Mini 4 and you can program these drones to go on a flight path. And all you have to do is take a, a map, for example. Well, it even, it even can look like Google Earth. So you could actually uh, have the drone, let's say, uh, let's say you start off over in this position. And you're right there. Then on the program that you have, for example, in the, uh, the application that you use to fly the Mavic 2 Pro, it actually looks like Google Earth. And you can actually put the waypoints. You would put a pin like here, for example. Then maybe you would put one here. You can actually say how high you want the drone at each spot. And then another one there, and another one there, and another one here, and another one there. And then eventually it comes back home. And then you start the drone, and it flies and does it automatically. Now you can maneuver the camera separately from the flight that the drone's taken, and you can exit the flight at any time during its path by hitting a button and it'll it'll get you out of the, the path and you can fly it on your own but it will do its own mission okay and you know there's been times where I've gone uh, on to crime scenes and I've just flown my drone and for example here here's a good example of what it would look like once you load it in to the system so there, there's probably some settings that show like this is something that he set up uh, but each time you fly a drone a DJI drone specifically it stores the elevation and the GPS coordinates so as you can see right here this is one at a crime scene this is um, I think it was speaks yeah Joanna speaks case and she was a victim of a serial killer in the Portland area. So, you know, you can see right there, I mean, it's pretty interesting how Google Earth can keep track of that too. And I think it's like a KML file or a KMZ file that you upload. 
And this shows you how where I flew the drone, you know, and it even has height in there. I think this, well, that one right there, I think is 60% battery power left. But if you click on each one of these dots, it'll tell you the height. And so they can be really precise. So they might have somewhere where they can look to see just the basic GPS coordinates he put in, and then they can go get the KMZ file from the phone or whatever device he used to visualize, and then now upload that into Google Earth, and it'll put it out there just like this. So they can really tell you exactly where he flew uh, the drone. But I mean, isn't that absolutely incredible, you guys? <laughs> that he was out there earlier in the day flying a drone around, and for some reason, there wasn't people thinking that was suspicious too. I mean, wouldn't that be make you just go, okay, look, there's a guy flying a drone over where we're going to have this rally. Oh, look, wow, that same guy has a rangefinder. <laughs> wow, look at that guy. He's trying to avoid the magnetometer. Look at that same guy is using the rangefinder. And wow, he's got a backpack now, and oh, we lost track of him. I mean, it seems like the most inept Secret Service law enforcement sort of planned uh, protection I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it almost, that's why it seems like there's something else at play, mainly because of how inept it was. Yeah, so you got... You know, he's walking around. These people right here said he, they saw they see him on the roof. They look out on the roof. And then you see an officer walking around this way. And eventually he decided to look on the roof. Well, how about you look on the roof right when the people told you, hey, there's somebody on the roof? Because he didn't shoot for two minutes later. All right. And then we also see the video of him, I think, before 6 o'clock. He's walking around the perimeter over here. He's right in that sp specific location, right where that pin is. If you watch my live streams, you'd sh I could show you that if you look at the video on the live stream, you'll see this window here and or the image that's out there. If you go out and watch the video that's out there of him walking around, you'll see this window and you also see these vertical pipes right there. So he's standing right there. And then eventually he gets taken out. Um, you know, like right around 611, the shots are fired at Trump right here while he's standing on that platform. And then I think there was two more shots that are really tight in there where he was going after Trump. That's why you hear the doot, 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 you know, like three shots where he was really controlled. And then Trump was moved to the ground. And he may have thought he even hit him. A lot of people in the crowd thought uh, he was hit. And to be honest, I thought he was hit too while I was walking on my treadmill. I was just watching the it live. And he, you see him reach for his head. And then you hear more cracks. And you think, oh, man, somebody hit him in his body. And then he goes down. And so, I mean, it, it was really freaky. So he may have thought he hit him. But if you look, uh, at that point, remember how he, there's a volley of shots, the da, 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 you know, multiple, the other five shots? I think he was just spraying the area. And I think that's why Corey was hit right here. And then another bullet was shot to the right of the stands. And that's what hit over here and ricocheted off the, um, like the railing there and then two people were hit in this area. So there was five shots taken. Uh, we just only know of, uh, I think three, right? Because two of the people in the, in the right stands over here were hit and then one person in this stand. And I think those three people were all hit in the last volley of shots. There's two bullets that are unaccounted for currently. Maybe one of them is the one that hit the um, hydraulic hose on the crane over there that was holding up the speaker and maybe I think that was right over in this area so maybe there's another one that shot off and went over here a little bit so I think he was just trying to spray the entire area with those five shots and then after that he didn't shoot at all for six seconds or actually it's more like nine seconds he didn't shoot and then you hear one final and that is the sniper apparently from the roof of this building right here and he's shooting right back like this boom because he had a wide open shot of the shooter right here okay the shooter was shooting in this direction I'm kind of surprised that the shooter didn't kind of uh, go more like over here where he could just see Trump but he was out of the view of both of the uh, snipers on the roof there 
I don't know if he thought he could see somebody else on the other side. I have no idea. But, you know, interesting information about that drone, you guys. Absolutely crazy. All right. So thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button. I'm going to do a live stream tonight. Probably talk a little bit about this too. Maybe some other crimes. And I appreciate you watching. Hit that like button. Share and subscribe. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there.